people do want to ask you about Israeli soldiers back now on Israeli soil after conducting an overnight targeted raid in northern Gaza. Officials say it was done in preparation for the next stages of combat, to use their words. Meanwhile, President Biden calling for a humanitarian pause to allow for more aid to enter the Gaza Strip. So, Admiral, let's start there. Why is it so difficult at this point? Why is it taking so long to get that humanitarian aid into the hospitals, for example, that say they're just going to have to close their doors? They don't have the supplies, the water, and the things they need to operate. Well, it's a trickle, uh, and the president said that yesterday. We got to see more aid getting in there, uh, but it's a very complex situation. And, and I mean, obviously, it's a it's a it's a zone of combat, uh, so we got to make sure that it can get in safely. Uh, there's an inspection regime that has to be done before the trucks go in, so that um, so that. The, it, Israel can understand there's no contraband in those trucks. Uh, and then, of course, Hamas uh, needs to allow for the free movement of, of these uh, vehicles uh, inside Gaza to get to the aid organizations, to get to the people. So there's an awful lot of moving parts here. It's very complicated. That's why David Satterfield's on the ground work, working all those levers every single day. We hope that there'll be more trucks going in today. We'll see. Uh, we uh, weren't able to get any in yesterday. Uh, that's not good. We, we're going we're gonna to keep working this very, very hard. Um, Admiral, there's a lot of talk about <clears throat> the ground invasion, when and if and how it should happen and, and what the purpose is for it and what the long term solutions would be and not to go in without strategic purpose. But what about Iran? What everyone always talks about the Iran factor and Iran being a part of this. And now we're hearing about factors, uh, sectors in Iran uh, attacking our troops in other countries. What about Iran? What's being done? There's no question, Mika, that uh, Iran has complicity here across the board. They've been supporting groups like Hamas and Hezbollah for years. They're supporting these militia groups in Iraq and Syria that have attacked our troops in, in, in recent days. Uh, and that's what the direction and facility facilitation of the uh, of the IRGC. So uh, we have sent a strong signal to everybody in the region, including Iran, uh, that we don't want to see escalation of this conflict and that we have significant national security interests at stake, let alone the protection of our troops that are in places like Iraq and Syria. And we're going to take those responsibilities seriously. We're going to act and we're going to make sure we have the capabilities to do so to, to defend those interests. Admiral, the uh, media spotlight has fallen off of Ukraine lately, with the focus being clearly and responsibly on the Middle East and what's going on there. But in Ukraine, winter is fast approaching. It is yeah. still a very hot war, and it's a war between two nations, Russia and Ukraine, in which one nation, Russia, has a deep, deep bench of people, of soldiers, that they can keep sending to the front. Ukraine, less so. What are the prospects for a long winter war? Mike, that's a great question. I, I think we all need to settle in and be prepared um, that, uh, that as the weather gets worse, here in the next month or so, um, that uh, that these two sides are going to keep slugging it out, uh, and that could go past the winter. I think we all need to be prepared for that. Now, what it looks like in the spring, I don't know. Uh, but uh, this counteroffensive is still progressing. Even the Ukrainians will tell you, Mike, that it's going slower than they want it to go, and the weather is starting to not be very cooperative. And to your other point about manpower, you're right. Uh, Russia has more manpower resources at their disposal. It's just, frankly, a bigger country. And they, what they're doing, Mike, is just throwing that manpower into the fight with little training, little resourcing, little preparation. They're just trying to overwhelm the Ukrainians. What the Ukrainians have in, in terms of advantage is better skill, better leadership, better command and control, and thanks to the United States and 50-some-odd other partners, uh, better capabilities, better tools, better weapons, and they're using them efficiently. Admiral, I want to go back quickly to the tr American troops that were attacked on our bases in Iraq and Syria. NBC News reported uh, a couple of days ago that it was two dozen service members who suffered injuries. Now we're learning yesterday that there's some traumatic brain injuries, TBI. So can you say definitively how many American troops were injured and what was the extent of those injuries? Uh, no, Willie, I can't give you an exact number. Really, DOD would have to, the Department of Defense would have to give that to you. That, it, what happens uh, with some of these rocket attacks, uh, Willie, is that sometimes the injuries don't manifest themselves, particularly if it's TBI-related, uh, brain injuries. You don't manifest yourself. The soldier doesn't report uh, symptoms until may maybe hours or even a couple of days after the event. And so that's why the number fluctuates a little bit. What I can tell you is that all these injuries uh, are, are not life-threatening uh, and that many of these soldiers who 
were injured are back on duty right now. But TBI, traumatic brain injury, is a factor. Concussive effect of these rocket attacks can be significant. And we're going to make sure that they get all the care that they need. We have a lot of experience, as you might imagine, after 23 years of war uh, with uh, traumatic brain injury. And, and so we'll make sure they get that care. So, Admiral, what level of attack from an Iran-backed group on American troops would rise to the level of an American response? Does it take the death of an American soldier? Clearly, they shot at and injured two dozen of our service members. So at what yeah. point does the United States respond to that? I'll tell you, the president spoke a little bit about this yesterday. He, he as commander in chief, is going to make his own decisions here about what we got to do for force protection, to protect our troops, to protect our facilities. Whatever that decision is, it's going to be at a time and a manner of our choosing. It's going to be our decision to make, and and, uh, and you know we'll we'll continue to watch this. As he said yesterday, uh, if you know if the attacks continue, there there will be a response. Retired Rear Admiral John Kirby, thank you very much. We will check in with you again soon. Thanks for being on this morning.